Welcome back to the Rock Rebel Magazine interviews. Today we have the pleasure to host a musician who, who is a stomach for the gothic doom metal scene born in the early 90s. From Halifax and from the realm of the dark and burning twilights, Nick Holmes, Nick Holmes from Paradise Lost enjoys this piece of majestic darkness. Nick, first of all, thank you very much for being here with us. I would like Hi. to start this uh, interview asking something about the title of this new release, Medusa. I know you are intrigued by the meaning of avoiding the depressing reality, the nihilism and the vision of a meaningless universe, but visually, what does uh, catch deep inside of you the name of Medusa? Um, it was quite a simple reason, uh, because Greg, when he, he writes the, the music, he always titles each bit of music, he gives it a title, so we know which song is which. And he, wrote, he called one producer, because I think he watched the film Clash of the Titans earlier that I've day. seen it. Yeah, the original one. So uh, I kind of laughed at that, but then I thought, and that's quite an unusual name, because uh, I would never think of that myself. So then I, I looked in the wiki page, and I, I was like, ah, it's quite a... And, the, and the, the description of what it means is very much like Paradise Lost. Uh, song description, so I like that. I thought, and I also like the title. So, well, yeah, why not? You know, so that's how it was. But we we thought the name a long time ago. You know, but it's such a specific name that you can only play so much with it. You know, when you think of Medusa, you just think of the Gorgon. That's it. So uh, to, to come up with a nihilistic concept of that image, I quite like that. So. By the way, because we have not chance to see the art, the cover artwork. That's it's not one. finished. It's not finished. <laughs> I haven't seen it. It will, it will, it will be connected with the Medusa, with Medusa, or with some other it's, issues. It's kind of impossible not to connect it to it. But, but I mean, we've tried to disconnect it, but it, it, you can't. It's got to have some kind of. A focal point on that, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 not finished yet, so uh, it's it's kind of getting there, but it's not quite there yet. So, so okay. we'll, we'll see. We will wait. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We wait. We wait for you. Mm. So this release, although carries on uh, your comeback of your early sound, but it's not a out of time album, uh, because uh, I can find a very fas fascinating melting pot of your past, the shades of God uh, and Icon period and some trail of your dark wave influences and a great groovy metal energy. Medusa, is a turning point in your career? Um, I, well, I mean, that's for the general public to decide. I mean, f from a musical point of view, it's very much like we're, we're continuing from the Shades of God album. It's very similar to the Shades. It's very style-wise. style, style -wise. It's, It reminds me of it a lot, uh, the, the doom elements, for sure. I mean. We started the band doing doom and death metal, and that's because we loved that style of music. That's why we started. So it wasn't that difficult to do it again, you know, and do it hopefully convincingly. Uh, whether it's a turning point, I don't know. That's for other people to decide. But I mean, you know, it's nice to be able to make, um, you know, a, a very old kind of old Paradise Lost sound with a, a modern production. It's kind of nice to hear that. So uh, nearly 30 years, 28 years later. So. Uh, and hopefully it's a bit more sophisticated than our, obviously our early work, but it's still, uh, you know, it's still very, we're still very passionate about that old sound, you know, still, it kind of excites us again, you know, after all many years from not playing. Reading the lyrics and at the same time listening to, you, to your new tracks, I feel a sense of coming back to the roots, to an ancient and more pure period, without forgetting the present and uh, speaking about the, your evolution, all the passages of your career. This feeling is the son of the sound, or is the sound that is born along this mind? Um, I mean, I think the combination of the growls, the growling voice with the riffs, with the, with the, with the doom riffs, that, that was always the early Paradise Lost, you know. So that, 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 was, that was always the, you know, the, 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 the growl with the riffs, the, the doom riffs, that was always very much part of the Paradise Lost initial sound back in the day, you know. I mean, so I guess that's going to be nostalgic immediately, you know, so, um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's that, and, but it's, I think also with certain riffs, that you have to growl on them, they don't sound as good, you know, and sometimes I may do a clean voice on a heavy riff and it just doesn't sound strong, so sometimes you've got to growl, make it powerful, you know? so, but like I said, the doom riff and the growl was very much, I just lost 1988 to 1994, you know, but concerning the, the come, come, uh, come back to the roots of many bands, 
um, you think you are uh, always uh, something pure and honest or for, for some bad is uh, a way to find something new to, uh, okay, I mean, to sell out? I mean, we, we've never really said back to the roots. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's always everybody else uses that term. I mean, for us, we, we just keep going forward and we're the same guys as we were in 1988, really. But we never forgot our roots. We just didn't like that kind of thing for a while. You know, it's, it's in 30 years. You know, you can still, you still like the music you grew up listening to. It never really leaves you, you know. So, uh, you know, we wandered off down different avenue, avenues, trying different things. But uh, back to the roots. I mean, people have been saying back to the roots for the last seven albums. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. I, uh, but it's not. I suppose this one kind of is more than all the others, if that's the word. But I mean, I, personally, I don't. Really, I mean, what happened then is there, and it's great, and it's got us to here. But it's still. It's still moving forward, even though it's reminiscent of the past. You know? I guess uh, that way because because in the last period, many bands uh, and are, uh, are are doing a back to the roots. Yeah. You uh, um, you began uh, you began very uh, some uh, some years ago. Yeah, I, mean, ago. I think I think we did the song "Beneath Broken Earth" on the last album, and 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 we did that quite quickly, and and, and we said this. Is, surprisingly better than we thought we could still do this stuff quite convincingly so we said you know let's try and do more of this because we, we you know and then it kind of give it energizes a little bit as well because it reminded us reminded us of being kids you know i guess so that's not a bad thing you know? i've seen this release but in the past album too for example icon or draconian times a great interest for the ancient cultures Im images and mythology especially for the classic greek ones uh, when, you, when is uh, born your love for that historical period and why? Um, I mean, any, anything from like the past, uh, I mean, like ancient past, it really just suits the music for lyric topics. I mean, I also find uh, symbolism interesting. I like, uh, not necessarily myth mythology, but what, make, what makes people believe in things that don't exist and who, who influences that. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, like paganism, for example, to me that makes more sense than any modern religion because they worship the sun and you can see the sun, you can offer it something and then you have better produce, better crops or something. That, that makes sense. Like you're seeing in national gods. Yeah, that totally works. But, but believing in something that someone tells you or a, a crucifix, they say, right, you believe that, then there's, no, there's nothing you can see. You just got one guy telling you that is how it works. And it's just, it's just nonsense. It just doesn't make sense to me. But at the same time, if someone takes uh, comfort in that and it's a personal thing and it doesn't affect anybody else, then why not? You know, it's fine. But all too often, religion is used in terrible ways, as we know recently, and it's just it's just a joke. It's just insane people doing things in the name of religion when really they're just talked in the head, basically. You know, that's, that's the way it is. So, uh, yes. Unfortunately, it's true. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Paradise Lost with Early on Tema and My Man Bride are considered the big three forerunners of Gothic metal scene. When you started to play and record the first demos, did you have the sense of what uh, were you creating? No, 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 no. We just uh, we were just doing things we, we like to do. You know, I mean, uh, it's funny you say the big three. It's, it's not like the, the big four, is it? Really? But, uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, we were just. Um, I mean, I can't really speak for my dying bride or uh, nothing about. Yeah, we, I mean, we just literally combined uh, the death metal bands we liked and, and like bands like Candlemas, you know, which uh, just completely combined the two, and no one had really done that before. You know, we were at the right place at the right time, I think. You know, so. Okay, last question. Uh, it's a typical uh, rock rubber magazine weird, weird question. Nick, what was the very first song you have ever sung and in which event? I sang, uh, I sang the song uh, Flower by Soundgarden on the first album. <laughs> and I was in a cover band. And uh, I was doing Paradise Lost. Soundgarden? Not live, no, it, yeah, it was, I think it was Flower so that by Soundgarden. We did a band on stage and I was singing. But we used to love, we, we loved Soundgarden and we loved. Uh, Nirvana as well, the first Nirvana, the early Nirvana. Uh, it could be that, I think, but it might not be. I don't know, I'm, I'm confused now. <laughs> that was definitely, what, well, that was the first song outside Paradise Lost I've, I've ever done, for sure. So, 
Does that count? I don't know. First song on stage, uh, maybe at school or something? Motorhead? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm too old to remember. <laughs> too old. But I think it was, yeah, Flower, that's, that seems to ring. I can't remember the song now, but yeah. Okay, we can, so you can see Flowers from the album. Yeah, can, is it, is it, can, is it called Flower? Is it the song from the first album? Uh, you mean Ultra Mega OK? So, Nick, thank you so much for uh, this interview and um, good luck for uh, Medusa and for and, uh, see, ya, uh, see ya in October for your tour. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll do some more shows in Italy as well, but that's the only one that we have right now. So. Okay, uh, my name is Nick Holmes from Paradise Loss and you're watching rockrebelmagazine.com.